Uh, hello, can you all uh, hear me okay now, Brad? You sound fantastic, yes. All right, uh, we lost you there for a few moments. Did you know that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, I just wasn't sure. Well, um, let me start over again, and I'll, I'll try to be quick through the introductions. But um, uh, this is Larry Reagan. I'm one of the co-directors of the Center for Online Innovation and Learning, COIL. And uh, this is a program that we offer on a uh, monthly basis called COIL Conversations. And the idea behind COIL Conversations is to bring in um, new thinking, some uh, outside experts, uh, new topics that might be of interest to our community. And uh, with the help of a small IT group behind us, uh, including our colleague Brad in the back room, uh, we're using Penn State's Connect Pro uh, the meeting uh, application as a way to communicate. Uh, today I'm joined by uh, a friend and colleague over the last year or so that I've gotten to know, uh, Prabhu, uh, see I practiced all this time, <laughs> Prabhu Subramanian That's right. uh, is a uh, recent graduate from Imperial College, which is how I got to know Prabhu. And uh, once he graduated, we started a conversation about uh, a new web-based tool that he had in mind. And he's been working feverishly to create this tool called CoLearner and uh, around a concept of uh, curation and sharing and uh, archiving information in a different type of a format and flow than what we're previously used to. Um, so Prabhu and I have been talking for at least monthly and sometimes a couple times a month. Uh, he's been extremely responsive to uh, suggestions I might have had about uh, the project and uh, he's got a small development team working with him on this product and we thought this would be a great place for Prabhu to share his work and his thinking with the, our community and see if we can get some feedback on the application itself as well as the role that uh, curation and archiving may have in our teaching and learning experience. So we're very open to different kinds of ideas of how this tool may fit. I know that Prabhu is very open to suggestions and ideas about the tool and ways that he can improve it. I know that for firsthand because uh, every time I've had a suggestion, well almost every time, <laughs> usually he'll say good idea Larry, sometimes he'll say that's not a good idea Larry <laughs> and, and we'll have a conversation about it. So. Uh, but just to let you know, Prabhu and I are sitting in a uh, hotel in South Kensington, London, called The Gore. And uh, in the room with me is a, a good friend and colleague, Bruce Chalou, who's the executive director of the Sloan Sea Organization, as well as a lovely portrait hanging on the wall of Mick and the boys, um, Ronnie and um, Charlie Watts. Uh, who else did we figure? Uh, in there, uh, um, Brian. Uh, Brian Jones and um, Keith Richards. So they're watching down on us, and apparently that gang was here probably in the late 60s, I'm going to guess. Yeah, maybe. maybe in the 60s. Sure, and uh, so they're watching over us. So we're in good company, I guess is my point. So let me turn it over to Prabhu and ask him to uh, give you a little bit of an idea of what CoLearner is about. Um, Prabhu is going to talk for 25, 30 minutes, and then we're going to open it up for some dialogue which is why we call it COIL Conversation. So welcome to the program. Thank you, Larry. Uh, good afternoon and good evening. Uh, I think it's really tense here, especially with the stones watching us <laughs> <laughs> from the ball. So curating for co-learning. Right? So co-learning is, is a term we kind of made up. It stands for collaborative learning. Uh, the idea behind collaborative learning is very simple. Let's say you stumbled upon this page, right? It's a, it's a topic called education, right? So uh, we all are passionate about education. That's why uh, you're, you're spending your time uh, hearing me talk, right? Now, um, I just got a note from Bruce that our screens are no longer being shared. Um, Brad, can you tell us if we're okay? Uh, screen is share is just starting up. I just sent you a note in the presenter area. Uh, you may want to do your webcam as well if you want everybody to see your faces. Okay, we were going to just stay with that still image. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and now still images like on as well when, when you had to log back in. Okay. How do we look now? Uh, you need to start your webcam. Okay. Can you see uh, Prabhu's screen? We see the screen. Yes.
Yeah, let's go with that for now because that's working. So sorry for the troubles. So basically, uh, this topic page on education, right? um, you can straight away see uh, the difference, say, from uh, a typical Wikipedia page or a typical uh, social networking page that curates about education. So the, the content here is neatly structured. So um, we have subtopics called key terminologies, future of learning, K-12, online learning. And uh, based on our interest, we can drill down deeper. So say, let's say we are, if you are very new to uh, education as an industry, um, we can check out what, what, what are the key terminologies re uh, related with this industry. Or, or if you are com comfortable with key terminologies, we can go and uh, check out some other topics. So what's happening in the future of learning as, as a space? What's the kind of thinking that is happening? Okay, so so this this is this is the main principle and all these topics are curated by a community of experts and learners and uh, even with, with with community playing an active role we are still able to maintain the quality for the topics and like education we have quite a few topics and, uh, but the whole point of this talk is not to explain just the website alone but the main thinking behind this so why why we are doing what we are doing and how, how it, it all came into picture right? So first, firstly, I want to start with a bold statement saying Kolanar is the best learning experience for modern learners. <laughs> now I'll try to justify this bold statement. Okay? I'll, I'll now talk about who the modern learners really are and what, what, what's the sort of learning experience they are looking for. And I'll, I'll, later on, I'll come back to the demo and, and I'll show why we are the best learning experience for these people. So starting with modern learners, so who are they? So whenever I say modern and learners, we immediately think about some, somebody, somebody like this, right? Uh, learners using fancy gadgets like iPads and laptops. Uh, these are like uh, active social networking users. They get distracted very easily. You know, they love playing games and uh, they pay a lot of money for the same old product, right? So, um, which is education. So, th th this is the kind of stereotype we are getting whenever I say modern learners. But there is more to that. So, when we look at a profile of learners participating in MOOCs and all these new initiatives, we, we, we see a category of learners. So we, obviously students, it's a significant percentage, but modern learners are also engineers, they're managers, they're consultants, they're entrepreneurs. So they already have a bit of real world experience out there. So they're not just coming for uh, learning without knowing anything about the book. Right? So they already have some knowledge, they are professional, and uh, in most cases, most of these people are time constrained folks. So we, we can't waste a lot of time trying to teach them how to read and what to read and when to read and stuff like that. They, they kind of know already from their uh, work or personal experience and they, they have a clear goal in mind for whatever they do. Right? Now, like I said, so technology ready, that's, uh, that's something we obviously know, which I don't want to talk about it. But I did a complete study on modern learners. I, I spent nearly a year looking at the pedagogy for modern learners, how pedagogies should evolve for people who are well versed with technology. They have very unique needs. They have uh, kind of a networking um, in whatever they do. So they don't, for example, they, they don't agree with one professor saying something. So they always want to cross verify. That's the whole point behind uh, millions of people signing up MOOCs, right? It's like, People are figuring, trying to check out what other other professors from other universities say about this topic. What what's Wikipedia saying? What's people on Twitter are saying? Right. So their network. Now, how should pedagogy evolve for people who have such a mentality? Right. Then um, modern learners they also have a different point of view for certain basic things. We assume. I'll I'll talk a bit more about it. And because of time, I'm limiting uh, only to these. But obviously, as part of my research, I focused on several such factors and uh, did a complete study. Right? Now, starting with the needs. So modern learners, they they want to do something for life. Uh, so they don't want to just do one degree and then say, okay, I'm done with my education. But if they're passionate about a topic, they want to follow it for life. So how do, uh, how do they do that? They use Twitter, they use blogs, they use... Uh, social networks, they also uh, attend coil talks like these. So that's how they follow topics for life and learn. Right? 
and they love connecting with experts so they want to know who the experts are who the learners are in various topics they want to have a conversation going on it's, it's community of practice right just that they want to do it in a massive scale and yeah start talking of sale they scale obviously they want to collaborate wider so it's it's the internet right it's not it's not like a single university alumni network or your single country or a meetup group anymore so they want to know a wide range of uh, ideas out there and collaborate okay and uh, so this is something i picked up from the uh, research from university of edinburgh so we will typically think okay so if somebody is doing an online course maybe they want to uh, progress in their career or they want to uh, get a job right so those are the kind of thinking we will have right but it's completely the opposite with modern learners for example uh, what university of edinburgh found based on their six mock courses where the, the 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 tendency to learn new things that was the primary motivation for people to take up mock mm. courses it's not to get a paper certificate it's not to get mm. uh, a job or whatever right it's it's genuinely passionate uh, way of learning which is something very unique and the second factor is they want to try online education i'll i'll you can you can talk hours and hours of uh, about the benefits of online versus blended learning and stuff like that but but i found it interesting that pe- people want to experiment they don't want to uh, just uh, purely rely on uh, university kind of for face to face teaching anymore so they want to uh, try out new things and so i said network this is something we all know i just want to uh, briefly mention this interesting point which is again from university of edinburgh where for for again based on six courses for each of these course there were like nearly 7000 groups on social networks so it's not like just one uh, forum or one group students use anymore to discuss they they want to form their own groups and uh, this is kind of interesting in a sense um, people believe in privacy especially the modern learners so the, the idea behind setting up these individual groups is you can just share things within your friends and then you slowly expand your group and sh- share and if if certain things you are comfortable sharing with the wider public you do it yeah so it's it's a different way of sharing it's not like okay i will i will use this forum site because that's what my university provides me so that, that that's not the thinking anymore for learners but they want to uh, experiment more and 700 tweets per day yeah so that's kind of uh, becoming the new uh, language um So that's that's so is that seven hundred p- tweets per person? Is that what they per per day for for a given course? Really? Yeah. Wow. So okay, that's for the kind of course. for a given course. That's kind of conversation. And we we I mean at at one side of the table we have academics arguing whether Twitter is good for education or not. Mm-hmm. Right? Whereas on the other side, learners they really love Twitter. Right? It's a very very comfortable. It's a very convenient way of discussing. It's it's one sixty characters, right? It makes you think. Right. Versus typing a huge email. which is like very easy right so um and then i said uh, modern learners have different point of view about certain things right let me uh, limit myself to just two topics which is quality and experts yeah now when we think about quality so what is quality in online learning so this was one of my questions so i asked this question to uh, academics like larry i asked this question to students i ask the government i ask pearson i ask everybody right so what is quality and it kind of interesting uh, to kind of analyze what people think about quality so when we when we when we i mean try to think about quality we think okay it's about the about the course design it's about the kind of materials we use it's about the person delivering the lecture it is the overall experience it's about the the accreditation right how how say the the governing uh, governing bodies in the states and in the uk think about my courses so that's what we think about quality right but if you ask the same question to learners for them quality is convenience to start with so how easy is it for me to learn or follow this topic on my phone on my tablet or if say if suppose i don't have time this month can i come back next month or next week or next year to follow the same topic can i discuss about it very easily with my network so that's that's that that's kind of quality for them it's good. 
it's a different mentality right and second point is uh, learners don't think about the governing bodies the public bodies anymore they they care about what other learners think so how good is this course what kind of feedback is it getting what what students think and lastly the third community so i may uh, so who are the other learners in this course am i going to uh, learn this course with a bunch of people who have no motivation or is it going to be a very active community where participating so these are uh, these are things modern learners associate with quality and now when we come to expert right again uh, very interesting so so if you ask who is an expert so we always say phd's doctorates peer pub, uh, reviewed publications research so, so we we think along those lines right but it's completely the opposite for for learners for example mm -hmm. salman khan is an expert uh, of khan academy uh, i i don't think salman khan would ever get a job as a lecturer in any university but but he is an expert right why he is an expert because he is able to explain concepts in a very simple manner so something like explain like an like i'm five so if if a person can do this successfully he is an expert and thirdly uh, even tweet sharers right so you can you can form a hashtag and you can start sharing links about the hashtag and now you will suddenly gain a lot of followers and if you ask this people why you are following them then they'll they'll think because this person is sharing a lot of useful information on this topic he should be an expert mm -hmm. so it's it's kind of changing people don't look at formal qualifications and papers anymore mm -hmm. but they look at these real world activities and they associate experts with uh, activities right and one of the one of the industry that is li really leveraging these online activities is technology industry right? so for example the co concept of badges and karma points and votes and whatever uh, the, the technology industry people really get it because it's very hard to find how good a person is in certain technical areas purely based on the uh, certificate or the degree alone right it it really uh, uh, it's it depends on the passion how good the person is in keeping up with say these technical areas and stuff like that um one of the popular website for technology is stack overflow i just wanted to put up this profile because he is a, a real world example of a person getting a job at google just purely because he has half a million points in this website and he has badges like inlight and nice sensor you know these are community provided badges these are extremely verifiable in a sense if you go to stack overflow and click this badges you will exactly know why the person why john earned this badge so what was his contribution that led to the community giving his badge mm. which is kind of interesting in a sense if you think about degrees for example like a person getting an a grade it kind of stops there how do i really know why the person got an a grade you could have could have studied just a week before the exam and could have gotten an a grade or he could have spent half a lot of time learning researching nice topics and maybe unfortunately could have got a b grade right so so we don't know the the verification factor is not there in a typical paper certificate but modern learners and uh, industries like technology they are starting to realize the importance of uh, figuring out the activities not just the end result anymore okay now so yeah from from all these so the, the key key point i wanted to convey is yeah modern learners are different so which means whatever you are going to do has to be different you, you can't just use the same old thinking anymore and say okay i'm doing something really cool i'm going to uh, attract millions and billions of uh, learners out there in various countries right so you really have to start from scratch do you mind my joining in sure i think your your point that i'm taking out of this prabhu is the fact that the conventions that we grew up with correct about the academy about experts about um uh, the accreditation process correct. are sort of no longer valid definitely in yeah. today's social rich environment definitely. where the accreditation can come from the community definitely the credentialing can come from the community yep. and perhaps what we think about in higher education or in any education environment is going to change Definitely. because we may not be the sole source of that accreditation anymore. Definitely. Definitely. Very interesting. It is changing. So in fact, this is one of the principle behind our thought leadership paper. So I worked on a paper with Pearson called mm -hmm. An Avalanche is Coming for Higher Education. Mm -hmm. And this was one of the governing principle. So how, uh, so on one side, 
the, the, the academia seems to be obsessed with research and things like that. Right. Whereas on the other side, learners are moving on in an entirely different direction. You know? how, do, how should one switch? So obviously, uh, I, we don't see learners switching to research kind of right. a mode, but maybe the academy have to start thinking to about adjust. Yeah, yes. very good. Okay, Thank, thank you. you. Um, thanks, Larry. Uh, no, moving on. No, I said um, the best learning experience for modern learners, right? Now I have to justify the learning experience part. Yeah, so co-learner collaborative learning. So what is collaborative learning? That's that's the, that's the first question everybody would have in their mind. Right? To be honest, it's nothing new. So we, we have always tried to introduce collaboration to learning because we know the importance of collaboration. And how did we do that? So if you, if you take the two types of learning, which is formal and informal learning, in case of universities, we have tried to invest on softwares like Blackboard and Canvas, and now students really use Dropbox and other things. Right? So this is collaboration. So you are you are collaborating on uh, on your studies. So you are sharing materials. You are uh, sh possibly sharing questions and answers and whatnot. Right? So that's how you you learn, which is often much better and much easier, even for the uh, professors, so because they don't have to spend awful lot of time trying to teach each and every student what to learn and how to learn. So they let the community figure out all, the, all those things and let the community handhold uh, learners who need more guidance, right? It's kind of, kind of convenience. Mm -hmm. Now, when we come to informal learning, it kind of becomes interesting. So informal learning, we have a plethora of sources, right? We have the social networks, we have blogs, and, and we also have some new learning specific social network coming up, like. Pinterest, Learnist, and Scoop It. Right? Um, if we try to focus a bit on this, so we know the pro uh, the opportunity is there. We know the opportunity to um, mix collaboration and learning and bring in a nice learning experience is there. But where these informal social networks get carried away is they don't do it right. So, for example, if you look at Pinterest, so this is a search for education topic on Pinterest, right? And I couldn't put everything. There were like nearly 300 such topics. Mm. And as a learner, I don't know which of these topics are good. For example, I don't know whether the uh, ACR Monat, the first topic, whether the ACR is a good person in education. Like, I don't know whether he's going to share. And the NBC News one, the third one, I don't know whether NBC News is good for education. So the, the chances are I would randomly click some of these topics and try to follow. It's a, it's a trial and error if I have time. Or I would start my own education topic. That will be the 301th topic on education with, with my own links in it, right? And the next set of learners are obviously going to struggle because now they have 301 education topics. Yeah, so so while, while the idea is great, while the user interface is pretty and things like that, obviously Pinterest is one of our inspiration as well, our in user interface part. But the, the model doesn't work. Now, when we look at learners, uh, which is often called the Wikipedia for learning or YouTube for learning or whatever. It's a it's an improvement over Pinterest. In a sense, in learners, there is only one education topic, which is great, but it stops there. There is no structuring, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, if let's say if I'm passionate about, about MOOCs, online learning, future of learning, topics like these, I don't know which of these boards are related to that. So I will probably end up making lots and lots of searches, figuring out all these. And if I have time, I might do it. Or chances are, again, I will create my own learn board and start curating and start attracting my own topic. So artificially, when you look at these websites, they will have thousands and hundreds of thousands of links. And it will appear like there is a lot of activity going on. People are learning. But I don't think sharing content is the same as learning the content. Mm. So they are, they are two different extreme aspects, right? Now, when we try to revisit types of learning, yeah, I said uh, there are two types of learning, but there are actually three, three, right? So we have formal, informal, and then there's something called non-formal learning, which is the best of both formal and informal learning. So in non-formal learning, um, there is a bit of structuring in place, but it is not completely formal like a formal learning. So there is a semi structure. It's usually a few learners and experts getting together to learn about a topic, a set of topics. They will have a fixed agenda in mind. And we see non-formal learning in various forms and shapes, right? 
So we have meetup groups, conferences, coil talk, even today, right? So this is a non-formal learning with a, with a fixed agenda in mind, but again, it's more collaborative and stick, stuff like that. And so from my research, I found that often non-formal learning is the key for somebody uh, for life. So in a sense, if you want to progress in your career, it doesn't matter what you learned at your university, what you're going to learn informally, but the, the kind of conferences you're going to attend, the kind of serious networks you're going to form, the kind of serious topics you're going to learn outside university for life, that is what is going to take you to the next stage in your career or help you find new jobs or simply learn new topics, right? And non-formal learning. And some people thought MOOCs are here, so they, they provide a best non-formal learning experience for life. But I disagree. Because if you if you take Coursera, for example, it's an amazing idea, right? They make all these online courses accessible from a single website and it's very easy to participate in these courses and stuff like that. But uh, let's say I'm interested in these topics, information risk management, blah, blah, blah. If you, if you see the top ones, August 28th ones, I've, I kind of already missed them. So I know I'm going to fail those courses. So the chances are I will never join them. Or even if I join them, I will never have the motivation to complete all the assignments. And even if I want to complete all the assignments and stuff, it's just too much work. Uh, for example, if I'm spending all this time, I will never have time to prepare for the coil talk. Mm -hmm. right? And th this is kind of um, getting replicated each and every time for every course. That's why we see huge dropout rates. We see very less activity in terms of serious conversations happening or conversations happening just before the just the quiz deadline that like people are trying to figure out what's the answer or how do we how do we try to get the answer without really asking what's the answer so they'll try to frame questions about uh, around these and stuff like that and and lastly yeah uh, september 16th when for example i'll be in rio right so i i, I won't have any um interest in joining and also uh, so in fact uh, i don't want to try to make make this as a rant but there, there are lots of uh, thinking that is clearly missing for, for example, some of these courses could be related to each other. So which means if you're watching a video on, say, mm -hmm. the foundations of business strategy, it could be uh, pretty well related to new models of business in society. And when you are participating in these courses, the, the platform doesn't make it clear how what you're learning is related to what you could learn or what you learned in the past. So that, that kind of a learning path, all those things are clear. So the, the analogy we can use for MOOCs is, it is great, but they are kind of replicating a cable television experience online. Whereas what people are looking for is Netflix. So co is Netflix for learning. <laughs> now, let me show you how we are exactly Netflix for learning. Right? So like I said, um, so education. Now let's say you have some time and you want to uh, genuinely learn about some topic. Now just like how Netflix gives you a lot of genres and gives you an option to choose what you want to watch, we give you a, an option to learn, right? And these are highly curated content, often from top experts and learners working together with, with algorithm backing them up. I'll explain how it works. So let's say economics. Uh, let's say I'm new to economics. I want to learn economics, right? But I, I don't have time, say, for six weeks or eight weeks to do a course on economics, but I want to do it in a leisure time. So concepts. So these are like concept videos on economics. Uh, simple, simple, simple terminologies that's explained to you, that that's explained in an easy to learn manner, often in like three minutes or five minutes. And this professor, Professor Petro, he was one of our first co-learner. So he was truly passionate about sharing his knowledge with the community out there. So the, the moment I pitched the co-learner idea, he said, okay, let me participate. And uh, so Professor Petro owns the economics topic so he has contributed lots of videos around it he's he's actively uh, dis uh, discussing participating in discussions uh, answering questions and stuff like that and one, one of the key uh, differences uh, we wanted to make learning distraction free so we want to make it very easy right so every piece of learn bit or learning um, material in common terms we, we open it inline, so these could be videos, PDFs, presentations, web pages, whatever. It's It all opens inline. And that makes it very interesting because you're not going to a separate website 
to watch these content and when the moment you go to a separate website say like YouTube you are going to get distracted because YouTube is going to recommend uh, some sometimes a lot of unrelated videos maybe cat videos or some comedy videos right and that's going to take your time and you're going to forget what you were doing which could be learning about a topic right and which is something we wanted to avoid and the second thing is uh, whenever people talk about learning management as a platform uh, so they see learning and discussing as two separate activities so typically the 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 the, the link to discuss about a topic will be buried or it will be in a menu and the moment you go there you are kind of losing the context you are kind of okay thinking okay what what was i learning about why, why did i come here and instead we wanted to make discussion very contextual in a sense let's say i watched this video and i want to discuss about it it's as easy as clicking this discuss icon and now i get a bespoke uh, discussion window just to discuss about that learn bit and what what we also do is make uh, give some context about uh, uh, the, the discussion in, in this case we show the video or if it is web page we show a summary of the web page and stuff like that and we make it very easy to discuss so so for example like i say interesting video right and we spent a lot of time uh, thinking how do we make this experience better so we started uh, applying a lot of principles um, commonly used by uh, facebooks and googles of the world right which is real time so so google docs for example things are real time nowadays right you make it uh, make a change your collaborators can change it, see it in real time and so we we thought that's a nice way to make discussions more contextual more interesting and engaging so all these discussions you are seeing are real time so if suppose somebody is following the same topic they will see all these comments and likes and what not everything in real time and we kind of extended this idea even to uh, materials that being shared for example if somebody is sharing a link to a web page or a video or uploading a presentation even these are real time so we we share it in case of a website we show a small preview of what the website is about things like that so we really extended this idea. And, uh, so I have a question for you from uh, Jennifer. Sure. Hi, hi, Jen. Nice to have you with us today. Thanks. Uh, she says, I think it would be important for related concepts to display with the associated subject matter. Finding the next concept is important. Definitely, definitely. That's one of the philosophy. In fact, that's that's coming up. In fact, I come from uh, such a, a background where I, I'm good at coming up with recommendation algorithms and stuff like that. But this is obviously the story. Start, right the idea is that once you participate once you start learning about various topics and things like that we'll start recommending uh, related topics and uh, we already have the data for example we already know how positive externalities is linked with uh, other topics and things like that in fact wait, I can quickly show you so probably while you're doing that let me ask you a question sure. if, if I'm um, help me understand the difference between the developer of a site and the consumer of the site. In other words, are, are, if I'm consuming the site, if I'm the one receiving the experts construction of that knowledge domain, okay. uh, they've decided on what video clips, they've decided on the PDFs and so forth. How do I participate as a co-learner, to borrow yeah. your term, yeah. in this environment? Yeah. Uh, am I equal? To the, to the person who launched it? Does that person moderate it and say, oh, Larry, that's not, a, that's not appropriate for our content domain. I'm not going to submit that. How does that work? Yeah. So basically, uh, the, the, the person who, who started the topic, he, he becomes the expert for the topic. Right? And we selectively work with few experts. The idea is that other learners, they start as learners, and they have to prove that oh. they, are, they are also an expert. And how do you prove it? You participate in the system. So it's, it's a gamification mm -hmm. uh, component. So you participate in discussions, you share uh, other videos, you, you moderate discussions. And once you start doing it, both, both the expert and the algorithm will note it. And you will start earning powers based on your activities. Mm -hmm. For example, one of the power could be to get a collaboration access on an existing topic. Mm -hmm. So you will be able to add content and things like that. 
or what you can also do is you can also prove your expertise by creating your own new topic um, uh, okay. let's say you are an expert in i don't know ed, ed tech startups so i have to tell you this is one of the features as uh, prabhu showing me this product over the last couple of months this web-based interface of how you construct and organize your content is that's right. i think very cool that's very right. cool. i can show so, you just fact, a little in plug. fact i when when i when i studied all the different social learning platforms i out there i found that that the kind of tools they have make it very easy to share content but they make it very hard to structure the content and which is why we said okay we have to start with a nice interface for structuring content and this is what we came up with right it's it's entirely web based html5 it works across platform ipads iphones mm. and it's very visual so edtech startups for example you can say um okay for example it could be based on geography so us uk and you can say maybe us comes on the top and then when you click done button what you really get is a blank canvas for you to add content and uh, let's say you come across a youtube video that talks about edtech startups and uh, let's say i really like this video so what we did was uh, we made it very easy to add this video for example you just have to click the plus button and place it and click add right Boom, it appears and right. that, that's your video so it's it's immediately watchable and uh, um, and in fact you can start discussing about your newly created video sure. and you can in fact uh, invite your friends to this new private topic of yours right so now suddenly you're collaborating on your own private topic right. and once you're happy you can make the topic public and right now we have put a restriction in place where there is a vetting process so if you want to make a topic public then somebody will be reviewing the kind of materials you have and that that kind of solves the typical quality problems that's existing on the social network and in the long term will let the community also participate in it in a sense will randomly pick certain experts and give them the access to review other people's public topics and stuff like that so that's that's the idea so can i um just ask again if if um let's say you're uh, well let's just say i've started a topic yep. on um oh i don't know leadership in online learning that's right is one of my areas but i want to i want to um include my colleague that's Bruce right. Lu that's who's right. also an expert in this area that's am right. i able to sort of elevate his level of Definitely. activity yeah. right away he Definitely. doesn't have to go through the gamification no, process no okay. you can directly I invite your friends okay. and uh, you will be able to set the permissions saying okay so maybe Brad is just a learner for this topic right. or maybe Brad is going to get edit access or delete access so you will be able to fine tune okay. controls but most of these in the long term will become a pro version feature yeah in a sense there'll be a uh two or three of the product the first obvious free it's free to use free to but there will be limitations on the number of private topics number of people you can invite for your topics and stuff like that okay. but in pro version you will have lots of uh, nice features advanced features would one of those advanced features and this is from uh, our guest Jennifer again she says are analytics available so if i'm yep. the instructor because i yep. uh, you know i've loved the concept from the yep. beginning and i think right away how can i use this in the classes yep. i teach um if i'm the and if i'm the instructor can i then access data analytics Def who was in the group how often they posted uh, definitely. to what comments they posted and so forth definitely i can get so in that. fact we want to uh, make this idea very uh, powerful so 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 there'll be like like i said there three versions the second version is the pro version which is going to give you but the third version is basically having the entire colonel platform just for your own organization oh, so you get the entire platform for your university so which means you will be able to configure the various permissions for your students mm -hmm. what topics they can post you watch they stuff can. like that and yeah. you'll get powerful analytics but the, the kind of analytics we uh, collect for the for the website we will use it uh, internally to figure out what what are the topics the person could learn or uh which kind of media format is suitable for this topic is it videos presentation or if it is a video what sort of minutes are they spending what's mm -hmm. what's really engaging them why why is it engaging them and we will expose uh a subset of these will uh, obviously it's a problem of visualizing right we can collect all these 
data in tons and tons, right? But you have to make it meaningful and actionable. In fact, that's one of my uh, uh, ex experiences. So I, I used to be a techie, uh, <laughs> coming to education with my uh, research thesis and with my passion, right? So yeah, I will be bringing all those mm, ideas. I love that idea. Great, thank you. So, um, having some sense now from, from Prabhu of the system and the tool, I'm curious uh, for our uh, participants, the viewers, what do you think of a, a tool like this? Uh, do you think this would work? Do you, how do you see being able to use a tool like this in the courses that you have set up? And uh, I know some of you are learning designers, some of you are faculty, some of you may be students. Uh, do you see this having a fit in any of your uh, course experiences? And maybe while people are typing and putting together some ideas, um, if I could tell my story Definitely. about this. So, Definitely. Bruce and I run a, um, a learning institute, a leadership development institute, and one of the challenges that we've had every year was um, how we connect these media bits, learning bits, of mm. Prabhu, as you call them, um, digital objects, really, in, yep. in for our program. And we happen to use Moodle. That's right. our learning environment. But we could be using Blackboard or Angel, whatever. That's right. And we're always challenged with where we store those and how we store those. And for the most part, they're identified by media type and stored within the hierarchy of the LMS. In other words, not making it very easy to That's see right. them at one time, That's right. to touch them, to comment on them, to do something. The reason I was excited about this particular product uh, is because you're, 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 you're breaking down the walls of the course and you're dealing with the, uh, the object and That's allowing right. sort of the self forming groups, learning groups yep. around this whole rich collection of media. Yep. To emerge, as you said, I like the term in, uh, from uh, you know formal and informal in the in between being non-formal. That's right. I, I like where this fits in that mode, and I would love to be able to use it in, in an educational setting like that. I think that is just wonderful. Definitely, that. Uh, Jen says uh, it looks very robust. It could create to student creation. Uh, of Definitely. E portfolios, yeah. a record of their learning, which I love. I Definitely. love that idea. So I, so I, I said Stack Overflow, right? In a sense, uh, so this was my original pitch to a lot of people. Uh, if you want to truly know the expert areas of a person, it's very hard to find at the moment. For example, you can go to LinkedIn, right? And the best they have is endorsements. Mm. And we know endorsements doesn't work because it is non-verifiable. Uh, anybody can endorse anybody for anything, right? And uh, so, so in fact, I read a lot of articles that said look, that predicted the depth of endorsements, but I don't want to talk about it. But, but whereas what I'm trying to replicate here is something what Stack Overflow has done for technology. Mm -hmm. In a sense, they are letting the people participate on their website, and they are measuring how good these people are in say answering questions, moderating discussions, initiating conversations. Uh, sharing things, helping clarification. So you can measure a lot of soft skills. You can you can do a lot of things. I mean, somebody said, uh, I think Jen said analytics, right? So right. we want to uh, do the same thing, but not just for technology, but for all the domains. And we want to, uh, so we have a profile page here, actually. Um, but we, we, we will make it as if that, um, that, that that page is more useful. So it's it's good for even the person, so you can have an idea as to uh, where they are spending their time on, how specialized they are on a topic, or are they learning more topics, or it could be like a uh, valuable e-portfolio type tool, which others could use to hire these people mm -hmm. or form groups with them. Interesting. Yeah, so that's the whole idea, definitely. So let me just play on that, um, that angle for a moment. Maybe this isn't the right application, but you just got me thinking about, could I use a tool like CoLearner to archive and curate my own work? Definitely. So say I have publications I've Definitely. done, say I've had videos I've made, yep. um, blogs I've curated, yep. whatever, I could, could, 
in theory, use this system to organize that That's data right. that then allows someone else, Bruce or someone else, to come in, comment on it, add to it, say, oh, Larry, if you're interested in that topic, take a look at this video. Yep. And all of a sudden, my portfolio becomes yep. sort of a learning space definitely. where other yeah. people, I like definitely, that. Definitely, definitely. Like and in fact, we kind of extended this idea where... Uh, um, So, so, where and where if you create a new topic and you say, okay, so say this is uh, COIL and in COIL students have to learn about education, mm -hmm. okay, they need some soft skills maybe, right. uh, probably they need to build their soft skills and then uh, they have to learn about education and uh, so you click it, right? And there you go, so we automatically created mm -hmm. your own topic page based on the content we already have okay. and these are public topics and uh, the, the person curating it has given access for other people oh, to link it and it makes it very interesting now you will get soft skills content all up to date so you have the timestamp here that oh, says when the content was added so does it pull it in based on uh, keywords that when Correct. when the image or the video clip or whenever that digital object was added somebody uh, enter keywords so that when you create something with similar keywords, it pulls it in automatically. Uh, yeah. Now, can I remove any one of those as yeah, well? Yeah, definitely. It is. Uh, so let let me try to add. So f for example, I showed clicking a button to add stuff, right? So we made it really easy. You can drag oh, and drop any and drag. object. Oh, that's So cool. you can, in fact, drag and drop files from your computer. It's very easy, right? Yeah. Now I I said okay, we have okay, we made it easy. Now what we do in the background is, apart from figuring out the thumbnails and mm -hmm. we do a lot of hard work. So we figure out a nice title, a description, we say uh, mm -hmm. what are all the possible topics mm -hmm. this belongs to and uh, in fact you can link it to multiple topics and we also automatically tag the content, mm -hmm. right? And this is how we can actually link various learning objects together mm -hmm. and actually these are the sort of techniques mm -hmm. the e-commerce industry was using to sell you more things, right? Netflix was uh, using oh, right. to recommend you more TV sure, programs, right? Sure. And because I come from that kind of an industry, I can now introduce these mm. to an industry that typically doesn't have sure. such a feature set. Yeah. And yeah, definitely, yeah. Well, I, I'll give you a real life example. Um, we at Penn State have been working around uh, MOOCs yep. for the last about a year or so, yep. uh, roughly. And um, so we always struggle with. Uh, who has that latest article? Who read this article? Definitely. Is this article any good? Definitely. Uh, oh, I saw a video clip from uh, Bill Gates talking about how MOOCs are going to change uh, elementary education. Definitely. And so this would be a way of me uh, using co-learner as a Definitely. way to, to uh, hold yep. and amass and begin to grow my yep. resources. Definitely. And you said MOOCs. Glad you brought it up. So, so when I was doing my research, I was truly passionate about MOOCs, right? And I had a lot of Twitter feeds and blog posts. But can you imagine that the amount of blog posts people turn out on MOOCs? Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. At least two or three posts a day. Very low quality, or often controversial, no data backing up. And I thought, mm -hmm. wouldn't it be better if we have a topic page called MOOCs? that just has the stuff you really have to see, yeah, right. can, which you can filter out. And this topic page, for example, is mm. curated with, uh, by a bunch of people passionate about MOOCs. And uh, mm. I know what their background are. They are. Most of them have back in, background in education. Mm -hmm. And for example, this is a nice way of demonstrating uh, viewing a PDF, right? So this is a mm. PDF that we are viewing in line. So it's a very slow internet, okay. Now I said destruction-free learning. Yeah. Makes it very interesting. So you don't have to, uh, download the pdf right. figure out where do i put mm -hmm. it should i put it in my dropbox or sh where do i put it should i email it to people so you can just have it here right and you can you can mm -hmm. comment about it or you can add your own tags okay and in the future you will be able to do a lot of personal things as well as mm -hmm. so that's that's the whole idea collaborating so you are going to use it as your personal learning tool or you are going to collaborate with your friends or with every friend in your in the co-learner which is the right. idea Right. So that's the idea.
One of the ideas uh, uh, Bruce and I were talking recently around the, uh, the institute that we operate is um, focusing on the emerging trends in online learning, That's whether right. they're MOOCs or badges Definitely. or OER or whatever. Definitely. And doing that in a way that um, engages our learners within the institute. I, I can see using co-learner as the foundation for as the curation site, if Definitely. you will, for each of those topics, Definitely. allowing those teams to come in, add their materials, make comments, yep. in essence, sort of merge um, and archive what they're finding in, in uh, digital resources that support that topic, but also then sharing it. Definitely. Through the curation and through the publication Definitely. Then, uh, of the tool, which Definitely. I think is, uh, is really very cool. Definitely. And uh, the, the beauty of it is, you said emerging trends in online learning. So you can go to online learning and you, can, you create a subtopic called emerging trends. So I have to come up with a topic that you don't have any information on. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, so yeah, so it's so the, the strategy we followed was we we worked with selective founding experts. So these are experts in education, healthcare, like a bunch of doctors, uh, scientists, people teaching leadership courses. And so we selectively invited them and said, okay, what sort of topics you can imagine? What, what do you think learners need that is missing on the internet? What, what is what is starting to be very hard to learn? Right. And and these are the sort of topics we came up with. Sure. And uh, we we just launched today, by the way. So uh, we we've been in in beta stage for the last three months, and I hope after the launch today and after the talk today, right. so we're going to start start to see a lot of interesting topics that's going to benefit everybody. I love it. I, I like the idea a lot. Um, so there are a couple different now. If I understand the way you described it, and uh, Bruce, just let me do a check. Uh, my system quit on me. Are you still okay? Are you able to see? Yes, I am. You're good. Okay, thank you. Um, so you talked about various levels. Just talk very quickly, if you would, about the free version and then the paid version. What what are the difference in terms of of uh, functionality and such? Okay, so that's uh, that is something we are still working out. Uh, you know, question about some of my play with so okay, okay, good, good, good. Thank you. Definitely. Okay, good. Thank so, you. Um, so, so, so one of the common uh, mistake everybody makes is they make uh, they introduce advertising into the system, and mm. advertising is a serious distraction, right? Sure. So, so we don't want to take the same path. Uh, at the same time, we have to be uh, sustainable, right? So, the free version will will give you all kind of access to view public top topics, create new public topics and stuff like that. But if you want to create private topics, if you want to collaborate just within your friends, there will be a limit set in the future. Right now, there's nothing in it because we want everybody to use it, get as, as much feedback as possible, get some, make it a, make it a very usable, useful tool versus sure. some, yet another social network that's going to have lots and lots of content. Right? Sure. Um, but in the future, we have plans to introduce some limit and uh, the, the pro version will be like, yeah, you won't have, or you will have a very we'll no large limits. amount of limits, yeah. and you will have lots of amazing features. For example, the presentation you saw today, it is purely done using HTML5. It is our mm. own presentation uh, idea. Okay. So this is something you would be able to do I with a pro see. version. So you will be able to create amazing presentations like this okay. with a very easy to use. Could model. you go back to that that screen? Uh, just leave that up while we're talking. Uh, individuals may want to get in contact definitely, with you. Definitely. So it sounds to me as though you are open to the idea of some beta testers. Definitely. If people want to come in, they can go to the site, set up an account, and definitely. begin yep. understanding that it's still in evolution. You're definitely. Still developing definitely. And yeah, and I would yeah, strongly appreciate if people could sign up and start cur curating any topic. It need not be about an existing topic on, on the platform, right? It could be anything. And by default, all these topics are private anyway, so you're not going to uh, worry about other people looking at what you're curating okay. and stuff like that. Okay, wonderful. So um, I'm going to uh, draw this to a close. I see we have just a minute or two, and uh, I am not able to get back in on uh, Connect Pro, Bruce. So uh, are there any further questions that uh, we can ask Prabhu? No, I think the last comment addressed the question. I think there was a the website. 
be interested in getting their hands yeah, on Yeah, that would be and awesome. Playing with it, which is in fact what Prabhu wants. So yep. that's 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 terrific. Terrific. Definitely, definitely. Terrific. I would love the idea. And like, these are my contact details. You can email us, tweet us anytime, and we would love to carry on this conversation even after this talk. Terrific. Well, folks, um, thank you so much for taking time out of your afternoon, our early evening here, and uh, joining us and uh, watching and listening a little bit. Uh, hopefully, we've stimulated some thoughts about uh, co-learner and about what you thought about a collaborative learning and um, maybe challenge some of the conventional thinking that we've had in higher education about some structure and some organization and, and um, perhaps thinking about things a little differently because uh, I like your points that um, regardless of what we as the institution in the academy are saying, Definitely. if the learners are doing something different, Definitely. if they're self-organizing around tools, uh, we have to then create learning spaces where that can happen. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Terrific. Well, thank you very much, Prabhu. Thanks for it's inviting me. It's been a pleasure. Me. All right. Thank you, and thank, thank you, you folks. Um, watch for future COIL talks coming up. Uh, we have another one, I believe, in uh, September. Uh, I'll get uh, some information out on that very shortly, but uh, we appreciate your time, and uh, thank you for joining COIL and supporting our efforts. Uh, good day to you all.